To live is to suffer, and to suffer is to live. When it comes to anime characters and the degree to which they struggle and persevere through adversity, there's very few that come close to the levels of distress that Agni confronts in Fire Punch. Now, I don't like comparing suffering, because every character that walks a mile in tragedy has their own story, their own experiences that we can all connect to. Whether it be the identity crisis that Kaneki faces after becoming a ghoul, Guts being Guts, or even someone like Diavolo who goes through an infinite death loop after running the fade with a 14-year-old mobster. But I have never witnessed the degree of suffering to which Agni faces, and despite the supernatural world of Fire Punch. It feels grounded and realistic because his tragedy is rooted in just trying to live. Well, also the constant burning thing is probably up there too, because dying by fire is literally the most painful way to go out, which is why there's an entire anime breaking down that condition. But looking at the bigger picture that you can break down to brass tacks, Agni's pain comes from his continued existence. Every day he's suffering, every hour he's suffering, every minute and every second he's tortured. He's in the balance of life and death and even questioning his own humanity existing through the pain. And that's why I reiterate that to live is to suffer, and to suffer is to live. Now, this video may seem a bit all over the place, but hey, so is Fire Punch. But I promise that it will lead to something very significant, so stick to the end. Fire Punch is a brutal manga, showcasing the greatest futilities of humanity, the darkest aspects of our nature, centered around a bleak, cold world with a complete absence of warmth. Where we have our main character, Agni, a person cursed with instant regeneration and blessed to burn indefinitely, becoming the devil or god of fire punch depending on your perspective. This story isn't about retribution, redemption, or anything like that. It's about nothingness, where we witness Agni walk down this path of inhumanity, not by his choice but as a byproduct of his environments and blessings and blurring the lines between the hero and the villain. But through this deceptive, desolate landscape, Fire Punch takes a strangely optimistic approach on the concept of nihilism. Everyone lives in their futility, existing to their situations regardless of how disgusting they are. For them, there is no greater meaning to life. There's no point to fight back. Because sadly, even if you make the attempts to do so, you will always face the same conclusion of death, despite the approaches you take. In your life, you will never get that payoff you desire, the cathartic ending that you wish for. It's all null and void, and the only ending you can hope for is that inevitable demise. Life is like a movie, and we're all waiting for the credits to roll. Agni begins his journey as the classic Revenger. He loses everything that's important to him. He takes up arms to tear down the enemy that he has in his head, and fire punches his way through conflict after conflict. In the movie, he's the hero playing his role, fighting against the big bads of the world, and he's fighting for his justice. That's his belief. That's his lie. But after Agni gets his vengeance, he sees his act for what it was, a flimsy and insubstantial excuse to finally die. Agni is not an Avenger. There is no real meaning to his life and death and that of those around him. The trail he followed is riddled with the selfish sacrifices that he can't get back. But most importantly, he is far from the noble hero that he's playing. It's this nihilistic mindset, the futility behind every motivation of a seemingly false and infinite existence that is truly at the core of Fire Punch. Agni's suffering stems from the baseless words of his dying sister, imposing her will for him to live while begging the question, what is there to live for in a world that's in a state of moral and literal decay? And so he battles this internal conflict from both sides. And to distract himself from the pain, he starts living in his delusions, escaping from his reality, and existing in his dreams, an ideal where he can fulfill his role as a big brother and not the labels imposed on him. He lives in his lies, but does it even matter? Does the time he spend, hours he lives, and emotions he feels have any less value? People find the most trivial reasons for continuing on and that's all they need. Whether it's the Ice Witch's wish to see the next Star Wars movie, Togata's desire to film a movie, or Agni wanting to stand by his sister. But Togata never finished his movie, the Ice Witch dies before a new Star Wars movie is released, and Agni's reason for living has been dead since the beginning. In the end, it was all meaningless. All actions were purposeless in the grand scheme. They were just acting like they were important and that they mattered. It's why I really like the theme of movies in this manga, as cinema is a place where we can get lost in a story and become inspired by the ideals and lies present with the heroes in the story. Like with Togata and his wish to become a hero who saves people inspired from the movies he's watched, or his belief that the afterlife is a movie theater that plays a film that continues on into eternity without an ending. Fire Punch Like Life is really about nothing. Regardless of what we do in our lifetime, it's just a bleep in history. 
history. Billions of years have passed until now, and billions more will continue until there is complete emptiness. So what? Is that the underlying message we're supposed to take away? That life is pointless, suffering with no meaning? Well, I think the ending of this manga brings it all together, and it may sound a little pessimistic, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe there isn't a greater meaning to life. Maybe that these dreams and wishes we aspire to achieve are just unachievable. Maybe we're not lucky. Maybe life is suffering. Maybe we're all doomed. But it's in those long, agonizing periods that make the peaceful times that we can find joy in. If living is to suffer and suffering is to live, then the opposite is true. How would we know pain without peace? How would we know in everything without nothing? To quote Uncle Iroh, sometimes life is like a dark tunnel. You can't always see the light at the end of that tunnel, but if you keep moving forward, you will come to a better place.